This is the iMac Pro. And to be completely honest, I came into this review and into this product with some reservations. And this is really for two reasons. The first is that I've had a complicated past with Apple Pro lines before, more specifically the MacBook Pro. But also because this feels like a set computer. It's an all-in-one, you can't replace parts, you can't update parts. So what you see is what you get besides eventual software updates. And that would be fine if it wasn't for the hefty price tag. But thankfully, I think the stars have aligned with the iMac Pro. Well, sorta. So as I said before, this computer is considered an all-in-one. Now, in order to be a good all-in-one, in my use case, it has to have a good screen, great performance, good design, good speakers, and a great port selection. And thankfully, it has all of those things. Now, first off, let's talk about the screen. It's the 5K display that Apple has put out on iMacs before. It's pretty color accurate, which is great for both photos and videos, and it's really damn sharp. But this type of screen is good for both consuming media as well as creating media. And this also goes hand in hand with the speakers. And the speakers on iMac Pro are actually pretty good. They're a lot better than iMacs in the past. And I'm also not using physical speakers on each side of the monitor. I'm relying on the built-in speakers in the computer itself. But that said, I haven't faced any issues with the sound quality coming out of this computer yet. Now, obviously it's not the most accurate form of listening to your audio, but as of right now, it does its job and I'm not complaining. And right next to those speakers are the ports and whoever was in charge of the port selection this year was not on crack. They have basically all the essentials that I need being USB-C, regular USB or USB-A or really whatever it's called and a headphone jack. That's pretty much all I need in a computer. And of course the ports are still around back which I don't think will change anytime soon. But I think I've kind of come to terms with the fact that the back of the iMac is gonna get pretty scratched up by blindly trying to plug in cables. And I also wanted to make the point that this computer doesn't come in the smaller variant. It's just the 27 inch iMac Pro, which I feel is honestly like a missed opportunity on Apple's part because any way to make this slightly cheaper and slightly more accessible is a win in my book. But summing up all of these points, it leaves you with a pretty well-designed, really functional mammoth piece of technology. Now finally, let's talk about the most important thing with this computer, and that's performance. Now this is sort of a rough topic when it comes to the Pro line of Macs, because especially with the MacBook Pro, it falls really short. Now I think it's important to mention that I'm not the biggest tech spec aficionado. I just know what works and what doesn't work. So that said, this is my configuration. And with this configuration, I'm getting a lot of really great performance out of this computer. But with this computer, I've learned where the separation lies between hardware and software. So first up, let's talk about Final Cut Pro. And oh, I have had quite the history with Final Cut Pro, especially on the MacBook Pro. Now the issue with the MacBook Pro is the fact that the hardware couldn't handle the load I was trying to put onto it. And with that computer, I could very easily tell where hardware broke down and where software broke down. Now on the other end with iMac Pro, it is 100% all software issues. The hardware is totally capable, but the software just isn't there yet. Now, if you ask me if I've experienced as many issues with Final Cut Pro on MacBook Pro versus iMac Pro, I've experienced way more, countless more issues on the MacBook Pro with Final Cut Pro versus iMac Pro with Final Cut Pro. It's a lot of pros. And do you remember like the graphic distortion that I'd get on MacBook Pro, such as like the red bars and the weird glitchy effects? There are pretty cool glitchy effects in their defense, but that isn't a thing on iMac Pro, and holy God, I am so happy about that. See, this computer does not stutter. It does not skip a beat. It's the software, 100% the software. And that is something that I honestly put on the developer at this point. I put this on the Final Cut Pro team at this point to make software that is capable enough for the hardware that they already have out there. But let's take a step away from Final Cut Pro for a second because I could talk about this for ages. Trust me. So let's talk about the other software programs that I've used on this computer that have been a breeze. Pretty much all the Adobe suite. So Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, Premiere, all work wonderfully. Pixelmator works wonderfully. iTunes, Safari, Motion, Calendar, everything. It all works 
wonderfully. But again, any issues that I ever have with anything, no matter what the software program is, is 100% software. There are zero issues with hardware. I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm just like, I'm so happy to finally have a computer that basically does what I want it to do. But I know what you're saying. This is a desktop computer with desktop performance, and it's not a laptop. A laptop is meant to be portable. This is not portable. I guess you could try, but you'd look weird. And I fully understand that. But the MacBook Pro is a disgrace to mankind. The iMac Pro is our lord and savior. But this type of thing makes me hate the MacBook Pro even more. Yes, I said it, hate. I hate the MacBook Pro. There's very few things in this world that I hate, and the MacBook Pro is one of them. So yes, this $8,000 iMac Pro gives me a great new appreciation for how much I hate the MacBook Pro. And the sad thing is that the MacBook Pro is basically half the price of the iMac Pro. It's, I think, $4,000 for what I paid for the MacBook Pro, which is half the price of an $8,000 iMac Pro. I just helped you do math. Now you'd expect for a computer that's half the price of another computer that you'd have half the performance, and that's not true. You get maybe like an eighth or like a, like a 16th of the performance, and that's generous. But yeah, no, moral of the story is, MacBook Pro sucks. <laughs> no, but seriously, moral of the story is, the iMac Pro is not for everyone. It's a very expensive computer that pretty much only Pro users are gonna buy, hence the name iMac Pro. Unlike the MacBook Pro, which should seriously be put in a Pro dumpster fire. But iMac Pro is not for everyone. I fully understand that. It's meant for people that are doing crazy extreme things on their computer, like putting 5K RAW files or even 8K RAW files into Final Cut Pro and then trying to edit away at that. Not to mimic something Marquez said, but it treats RAW files as if they were ProRes. It's like cutting through butter. But I think the biggest issue with this computer, which really isn't an issue, it's just the fact that it's not portable. It's not meant to be portable. That's sort of where you'd hope that the MacBook Pro would become a powerhouse on the go workstation, which it is far from. But that said, if you're an average user, the iMac Pro may not be for you, but if you are a creative type, such as a video editor or a photo editor or whatever you're doing with massive file sizes or you know intense builds, the iMac Pro is a great purchase if you have the money to spend. But unfortunately, the MacBook Pro still sucks.